and welcome to Learn Your Color Computer. So let's begin. I'd like to say a few words about the biggest problem in the computer community today, and that's the closet computers. They're the ones that end up in your closet, alone and neglected, after a few fun hours with playing some games. This usually takes place a few months after Christmas, when somebody buys a color computer for the kids to play with. Then, when the fun wears off, into the closet it goes, to sit and gather dust, never to realize its full potential. Some folks may have just had it break down on them and decided not to get it fixed, even for a blown fuse. Well, this has gone on for too long now. With the millions of computers in people's homes today, only a few thousand of them have taken the time to learn their computer and take advantage of the remarkable power available in the small white case. Some people have even used their computers to run their own businesses. But this is not enough. If everybody who owned a closet computer was to become a serious color computer user, we'd be a more powerful group than any other. And this is what the series of shows is all about. So let's begin. Hi, welcome to the sixth installment of Learn Your Color Computer. In this installment, we'll teach you about the commands of len, left string, right string, mid string, mathematical parentheses, and putting more than one command on a line using a colon symbol. First, we'll cover the len command. The len command is used to measure the length of a string. To show you what this is all about, type in this little program. Clear out memory. We put line 10, print, quote, enter a sentence. Quote. Line 20. Input Q string. Line 30. L equal len open parentheses Q string close parentheses. Line 40. Print, quote, Q string is, quote, L. Line 50, print, quote, characters, long, quote, and line 60, put an end to the program. Now run the program, and at the question mark, type a word or sentence. And enter. The program reports to you how long the string of Q string was. Try running the program a few more times. Enter a different word or words. Notice how the program reports a different value for each string length. Now let's take a look at the left string command. It's used to return the leftmost portion of a string for a specified number of characters. When using the left string command, it's followed by two pieces of data, enclosed in parentheses and separated by commas. The first piece of data is the string to be examined. The second piece of data is the number of characters to return. To see how this works, type in this little program. 
so we can see what's going on. Clear out memory with new. And we type line 10. Print, quote, enter a sentence, quote, line 20, input Q string, line 30, R string equals left string, open parentheses, Q string, comma, five, close parentheses. And line 40, print, quote, the leftmost four characters are, quote, semicolon, R string. Then we put line 50, at which we put an end to the program. In line number 30, we told the program to examine Q string and assign the left five characters to R string. Run the program and see what happens if you had typed left most string. The program will return the message of leftum, which is the f which is the actual five rightmost characters of the string we entered. Now you may be wondering what you could do if you wanted to obtain the rightmost characters of the string. This is an easy matter to, to do. Change the line number 30 to read like this. Line 30, R string equals right string, open parentheses, Q string, comma, five, close parentheses, and also change line number 40 to read like this. Line 40, print, quote, the rightmost five characters are, quote, semicolon, R string. Now run the program. And instead of the leftmost five characters being reported, the rightmost five are reported. As you can now understand, the right string and left string commands are used in the exact same manner, but they return results from the opposite end of a string. Now let's take a look at the midstring command and what it's used for. The midstring command is a handy little function which will report to a string variable the middle portion of a specified string starting at a specified position, returning a specified number of characters. The way midstring is used is also quite simple. Uh, following the command name, you, ha you have a pair of parentheses in which you have three pieces of data separated by commas. The first piece of data is the string variable you want searched. The second piece of data is the starting position of the string that, uh, that you want returned. And the final piece of data is the number of data pieces you want returned. As an example of how this function works, type in this short little program. 
throughout memory with new. Start with line 10, clear screen, line 20, print, quote, enter a string, close quotes, and line 30, input Q string, then line 40, you put print quote starting at which position close quotes and line fifty print quote one, two, quote, semicolon, len, open parentheses, Q string, close parentheses. That'll let us know exactly how long our string we entered is. Okay, then line 60. We actually get that, uh, that information off the keyboard into variable P. And line 70, make print, quote, how many characters to report. Close quotes. And line 80, we input L. So the number of characters we want to report will be in the L variable. Then at line 90, we actually get our string. Our string equals mid string, open parentheses, Q string, comma, P, comma, L, close parentheses. Then at line 100, we're going to print, quote, mid string, open parentheses, Q string, comma, quote, semicolon P, semicolon, quote, comma, quote, semicolon L, semicolon, quote, close parentheses, is equal to, quote, semicolon R string. That'll actually report what the string we've assigned is equal to. And in line 10, we finish off the program with an end. Now run the program, and here's what happens. Uh, we're prompted for an example string. In this case, we'll type this is a string. The string is assigned to Q string. Then we're asked for a starting position between 1 and 16. Remember, this is what we used len for to tell how long the string was. Now we actually have a maximum length to use. In this case, we type 4. The value of 4 is then assigned to variable p. Third, we're asked how many characters we want reported. In this case, we type 8 which is assigned to variable L. The string of Q string, the starting position P, and the number of characters in L were calculated by midstring command and are reported back to us on the screen as midstring Q string comma four comma eight is equal to S is a S. 
Notice that the mid portion of Q string, starting at the position 4, for a length of 8, is indeed equal to S is A S. Let's try that again, this time using the starting position of 6 and a length of 10. We'll use a string. This could be a string. We'll use position 6 and a length 10. Indeed, it does equal to that string. Now let's see what mathematical parentheses are about. A set of parentheses are used in some mathematical functions as a means of telling BASIC to do the function that's inside of the parentheses before any other parts of the math function. Here this, here's how the computer looks at normal math functions. First, any multiplication and division operations are solved first before all else. Second, addition and subtraction operations are solved last. And third, in case of more than one addition or subtraction, or more than one multiplication or division, all operations are performed from the left to the right. Now, if we were to give the computer a function to do, such as print 13 plus 3 divided by 8. The computer would handle this by the dividing of 8 by 3, then adding 13 to the result. This is where a parentheses operation would be used best to tell BASIC to bend its rules slightly and do the function in a different order. Type this, print, open parentheses, 13 plus 3, close parentheses, divide by 8. The computer then bends its rules and does the 13 plus 3 addition first, and then dividing the result by 8. There is another parentheses situation that you might see occur from time to time. This is where there is one or more sets of parentheses inside of another set of parentheses. When this occurs, the computer solves the function inside of the innermost parentheses first and works its way outwards to the outer set of parentheses. To see how this works, type in this short little function. Print, open parentheses, 10 minus, open parentheses, 5 minus 1, close parentheses, close parentheses, divide by 2. The computer will see this function and calculate it in a manner like this. 1 subtracted from 5 equals first result. 10 subtracted from first result makes second result. Second result divided by 2. In other words, it first calculated the value of 5 minus 1 the innermost parentheses function. Then, subtracted that from 10, the outermost parentheses function. Then, divided that by 2, the remaining non-parentheses function. Now I'm going to show you a really handy thing to be able to do, which is to be able to place more than one command on a line with the aid of the colon symbol. The colon symbol 
is achieved by pressing the key in the top row of your keyboard, which has the colon symbol on it. That's the second key to the left of the break key. Say you wanted to make a line with, with a, just a few commands on it. Now just simple one line program, which contain nothing more than a four next loop that does nothing except print the word hello five times. This is a classic example of a use for the colon symbol. Type this in. First, we'll clear out memory with the new command. Then we'll put a line 10 for x equals 1 to 5 colon print quote hello close quotes colon next x now run this one line program and you will see that indeed the colons did do the trick of course there are some situations where using a colon would not be a wise idea at all like this one change line 10 to go to 100 colon go to 200 colon go to 300 in a situation like this only the first go to command would actually be executed because you wouldn't be able to go to someplace in the middle of the line to get back however if the go to's were actually go subs it would work fine because when the referenced subroutine hits a return command it'll jump back to where the subroutine was referenced and get the next command something like this change line 10 to go sub 100 colon go sub 200 colon end now we put our first subroutine at 100 print quote sub routine one close quote colon return then on line 200 we'll put our second routine which is print quote sub routine two close quote colon return this routine should work fine with no problems in line 10 we're referencing the routine at line 100 when the subroutine reaches the return command it goes back to the next command in line 10 which references the subroutine in line 200 the subroutine then hits a return command and returns to line 10 where the end command is encountered terminating the program now let's have a little something extra here let me show you a little program that I wrote I can't believe I did that okay let's see load watch and here it comes it's loading in off a disk now this is a nice little program I put together which you may find interesting it uh, uses a lot of colons as you'll as you'll see here in a moment yes here we go like in line 170 we have the P mode and screen commands separated with a colon and in line 220, we have a nice little loop using an in-key string, which we do have the two commands also separated by colons. And uh, 
is a nice little time to lay loop in line 250, which we made with just four next that's nested 350 increments deep. That's also using a colon. See, things like that would have otherwise taken up a separate line for each command. Let's see what this program does. We run it. And it's going to load in a nice little picture for us. It's starting at 1. That's convenient. Let's press any key. It starts counting down. This is a nice little program. Once you've practiced using your basic commands after a while, you too can start to write programs like this one. They're not hard to make at all once you once you study the commands and what they do and just play around with the program a little. That's about all the time we have left for this week. Next time we'll teach you the way to use the commands of val, in key string, stop, cont, mem, sign, absolute, str string, and the or command, plus how to do exponential mathematics. See you then. Thank you for watching. We hope that you've enjoyed the show and that every person that watched will benefit from the information we've supplied. Remember that using your computer is a process best learned by repetition, so spend a little time with the computer and get to know the information we've given. Remember, if you have a problem with any of the information we've supplied, give us a call. One of our many experienced members of our club will be more than glad to help you with your information. If you missed a show, let us know. We can have a tape of the show you missed ready for you to view at the next meeting. That's about all the time we have for now. So tune in again next time when we continue to learn your color computer.